Hello my lovelies and I thought I would come on to show you a three square granny square bag. Yes, that is a bit of a tongue twister. It's a granny square made up of three large granny squares. Well, it can be as big as small as you want. So I have these granny squares that I've been, I've worked on a little while back and I was thinking about making some more and I thought, hang on a second. After seeing something that inspired me on TikTok, I was like, oh, I know what I can do with these granny squares. So I have two granny squares that mimic each other and they're pretty large, as you can tell. That's my hand. And I'm going to make a, another granny square that will be the bottom part of the bag. You literally only need three granny squares to make this granny square bag. Amazing. OK, so this is a really simple make that you could probably make over a week if you're somebody that's gone on holiday wants something quick to make in fact you can make loads of these i don't think it would take you too long let's face it granny square projects are the best projects because if you just want something to cheer you up um in my personal opinion they are the best things to do because you can make a granny square in no time and if you're stressed got a stressful job stressful life looking after kids finding time can be super difficult so finding a granny square that brings you joy means even it just yeah you don't have to worry about a massive blanket so um this i would say is a 12 inch square because i'm going off the base of my hand which is roughly about six inches i think so about 12 inch inches which would measure out at, hold on let's get a firm idea of how big it is uh hold on i have to remember that the ear so you're looking about 36 centimeters just over 12 inches there you go so my hands are a, a bit more than six inches um so there you go but about, about 14 inches all in all but you can make it as big or as small as you want it really depends on the usage of the bag itself personally anything that has holes in like this i would keep for the sides and we're going to make um, a more decorative um, form of a blocked granny square. Um, so these are slightly different. Each one's slightly different. So at least they're interesting. And you can just, like I say, you can just wing it. Make it however you want. These need blocking. They haven't been blocked. I've literally pulled them from out of my drawer. I was just, I just had a mad moment of going, oh, I know what I can do. So I thought I'd share it. So first of all, I'm going to use a magic ring. So we do have videos on the magic ring. So if you decide that you want to um, go and have a peek at that, you can. I'm holding my wool like this. This is how I generally hold my wool. Working tail away from me and working to earn the tail end towards me. I am using Starcraft Aran. You can use whatever wool you want. It's Again, it all comes down to how big you want your granny square. And to be fair, sometimes it's just about what hook you want to use as well. This is a 4.5. Obviously, Aaron, I would be using bigger normally, but because I'm making a bag, I want the stitches to be a little bit stiffer, a little bit stronger. So I've gone down on my hook sizes to just pull them together a little bit more. Um, it's entirely up to you. Use chunky yarn. Go extra chunky. Whatever floats your boat. But at the end of the day... The blueprint is the same. So to make a magic ring, I take it around, so wool in my hand, just making sure we've got that one right. And I wrap it around my finger like so. I don't have it overly tight, but I am anchoring or pinching in these fingers here. Hook underneath, pull that hook, and then just go around and move your hand as you do it because it makes it much easier. And you can see how I'm using, moving my left hand just to make it easier. And then anchor again, pinch there, and then that tail can't move. And then get yourself in a nice comfortable position where you can anchor again. And then I'm just going to do um, trebles for this. So we're going to make basically the foundation for a granny square. Now I do have a wad of wool next to me that's like a wool because I frogged something back and it's all stringy in. So if it comes into the picture, just ignore it. We won't look at it. So I'll do another one. So I'm doing granny clusters. We're going to make four. So one and then two chains because that's our corners. 
and then another cluster using the treble. These are UK terms, by the way. Um, so I am working it in a UK treble. And then another one. And then two chains. And then another cluster. And then one, two, and then another cluster to complete one, two, three. Yep, just making sure. And then another two chains, and then we're just going to complete that into the third chain, which is there. Okie dokie, pull that, pull that tight now. So you can pull that tail and it'll bring that all together. Now, if you want to, um, you can turn your work around and then work back to front. Um, and I think this will create a nice texture, so that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to go chain three here and work that way around. And then we're going to work our corner clusters. And then chain two. And then so if you wanted to actually let me just take that back so if you're watching it I'm really sorry let's do a standing stitch because I'm not completely clean keep clean keen on how that looks so I'm just gonna chain one just to give me something to work into oh I've got a bit of wool there and then I'm going to do my standing stitch so that we do have another video on the standing stitch if you want to watch it um, that goes through it a bit more, but I'm going to do it here anyway, but just in case. So go back underneath as if you're creating a UK double crochet, like so. Take that bottom loop and then create another one. We are working in trebles, but personally, I don't think the treble's much higher than that. So I'm going to just go and work that way. And then you can just see how that nice edge works. Okay. And it almost makes it invisible as well. So Every cluster has um, at least three stitches in it, half trebles or trebles or, you know, uh, can't think of the other word. <laughs> okay, so that's our corner cluster. Oh gosh, honestly, Michelle, wake up. I know it's Monday today, but right, because we're going to do a closed cluster, we um, I'm only going to do two um, stitches in there in the corners so we're not working clusters we're just doing um, trebles so because of that and the reason is and I'm glad that you've seen that happen if I'm honest um, is that we're not working in granny square clusters we're just starting our corner off this is just our foundation right for our corners to sit in but we're going to work a closed granny square so because of that, we've got a stitch that's going to sit right here. If we had all three stitch, all three in the cluster here, that would make that force that to kind of billow out a little bit, and we would have we'd have too many. So, what I like to do is just ignore that, ignore that last stitch, and put it into there. So I've just put it into the third chain. So you just work that way, and then there, and then in that one. So there's three stitches above my clusters and then just two into the corner like I say it just becomes a little bit unneat if you um if you have too many in your your corner and that just neatens out sorry I'm just detangling and then two chains and then your two stitches into your corner space so you've got four in all split between two chains and then just work those stitches into those um, stitches below, those three stitches. Okay, and we are working in UK trebles, just in case you've jumped on. So, so can you see what's happened there? Somehow, no, I've done the right thing. It just looks a bit loopy, so that's just a different, it's just that stitch is a bit looser than normal. So that's fine, I haven't done anything wrong. But you can see how it's creating that like a mm, bit of a messy. But hey ho, it'll all come together. 
chain two and then so the reason why I made the granny squares in the Aaron was because I was going to make another cardigan and then I got a bit bored halfway through and I was like shall I make a nice big thick blanket with this colour because I love I absolutely love duck egg blue So, oh. then I must have put it down and then got waylaid in other projects because I, I'm always teaching. Sorry, I keep moving around the board. I have to keep reminding myself. I'm going to have to put a little spot here, I think, that says don't move off that spot. In fact, there is one already there, so maybe I need to, to do that. As I'm chatting, I seem to, my arms seem to move. I'm one of those, you know, when you're on the, um, on the Xbox and I'm like, woo, going around the corners, woo. <laughs> Sorry. Ramble, ramble, ramble. Okay, just making sure I'm not adding an extra stitch in here because of my standing stitch. So going to that one there. Oh, come on through. Right, so that's my first row, my second row. So the next row. Um, I'm not going to turn around because I don't really it doesn't really make any difference if I go that way or that way at this moment in time but I just think it just helps when you're doing the first row it kind of um, helps you position it better if you know what I mean if you know what I mean Harry so the next thing to do is create our standing stitch and then I think at this point I am going to start working in half trebles on this row. So chain one and then I'm going to skip that stitch below and I'm just going to work straight into the, corn, the corner with half trebles instead of the trebles. Chain two and I'm literally winging this in front of you to be honest. I'm not going to do it to the whole way through but I thought you might like to. So that's my corner. I'm going to chain one again skip the stitch below and then go half treble into this one and we're going to create some nice little gaps but because I'm using half trebles I'll be closed down a little bit more so you could make this bag in multiple colours I'm going to make it in one colour um, purely because so sorry the pattern here as well is um, a bit like the moss stitch in the sense that you create the stitch chain one miss a stitch do your half treble, chain one, and then move on. So you kind of get that nice gappy. And then in the next row, we'll, we'll fill that gap in again. So, um, yeah, so this for me, when I'm using um, much thicker wools, I actually prefer to have a, um, to keep a very, a much simpler, sorry, chain one, and we skip a stitch, a much simpler colour palette. Because I think when you're using a thicker wool, the stitches kind of sing on their own and I kind of want that to stand out more when I'm using a thinner wool such as a DK then I'm more prone to changing colours I've got a knot oh dear um and I find that much nicer but in when you're doing stitches like this and I think when you're working in a thicker wool I think you do get a bit of a kick from how nice um the stitches start to look because you can see more of them Work straight into, skip that stitch and then work straight into the corner. Oh, I did a chain, I didn't need to. And half treble. And then same again. Two half trebles. And then chain. Skip stitch. Hang on, wrong one. Skip stitch. <laughs> with a half treble and then chain one and then do the same again half treble, chain one, skip a stitch half treble oops the days is I've made a mistake, I made a boo boo I was right the first time <laughs> it's funny isn't it how you question yourself doesn't matter how many times you've done it you just go oh no right so it's that stitch I need to, to go in and skip that one I thought I was counting wrong one, skip half treble 
chain and then half treble skipping the stitch below skip a stitch again straight into that corner because in the day your rows really should be when you're doing a square they should really be mirroring the row you've done on the other side so I have corners and flats so when I'm doing my patterns I say working on the flat and working in the corner so to me this is the flat that's the corner obviously chain one skip your stitch below and then half treble again chain one skip your stitch below and then work into the next stitch half treble chain and then we can work straight into can we can we can we do it can we do it Are you gonna let me hang on and then chain one and then we can go into our second into our stitch there yes My stitch is stuck. So the, because the standing stitch is pulling up a little bit from there, it looks like the gap's full, but it's not. So next thing is, is we're going to work on filling the row. I'll try to keep my area tidy. Is filling the row. So let me just turn this light down because I've got daylight going on. I don't necessarily need that big light on there. That's much better. So we can now do our standing stitch into our chain space. Do our chain one. And then I think we will work in half trebles, tighten it down a little bit more. So half treble into there, and then a half treble into there, and then straight into the corner. Oh, sorry, not into the corner. I usually skip that stitch to be honest. Because your stitch heads always lie to the right hand side of your post. Um, I'm going to do another video on um, stitch architecture and stitch placement because I have done it in the Cherry Baker one. So for anybody who wants to look at that, it is in the Cherry Baker one. I can't remember. I think it's in the first chap the first part of chapter two. And it talks about where you put your stitches, where you count from. So for instance, you could get really confused right now and go, oh, but this stitch had that. I need to do that one. But that stitch head belongs to that one. So they're actually sitting kind of like that. So let's just watch me do this now. As I pull up my stitch look, so you know now that this this last loop is going to be my stitch head. Where does it sit? It sits on the right hand side, doesn't it? So if we do another one into that stitch head, then you can see that that was that one and that's that one now. So they're always on the right hand side. If you're left handed, it'll be the opposite. And if you're unsure, just do what I just did and you'll soon see what belongs to what. So really, I should be working into there for that. But if you really want to make it easier on yourself, the best way to do it really is to go right, okay. So we know we've got to work into this stitch head here. So that's that one there. So I tend to skip that one there because that's underneath that one kind of belongs there. And I just work into that one there. So I know I've done that one. And then rather than going into the stitch heads of the post, what I do when I've done something like this is I just work two half trebles into that one chain space and then kind of skip it and then two into that one and ignore the post because they can be a bit tedious to keep trying to find the hole and then you kind of wreck the stitch so if you just work two half trebles in between those posts into that chain space it becomes a little bit easier to navigate and you can kind of speed through so that's all you need to do really is just work your way through that and then chain two and I'm going to come back and show you what my finished um, square looks like so that you have a feel for how it looks this can look great in cardigans as well so if you're making a cardigan a granny square cardigan or a hexagon cardigan this is in a really simple but effective mindful way of crocheting um, again using squares they're just amazing so I'm going to pause it here I'm going to come back in a moment and we can then look at what we do when bringing them together 
Okay, so all three squares are completed. I have now worked on my other granny square. This will be my bottom half. And I'm going to show you how we're going to bring these together. So, I know I haven't got my camera up very high. So let me just, without showing you too much of the mess of behind the scenes. So basically you take one square, so this is my side, and you make it into a triangle. Okay, there's one side, can you see that? And then this one I have started with, so it needs to be basically like that. No, it doesn't need to be like that, hang on. I've got to remember what I was doing. Um, so that's my side. Sorry about that. It's because I've been I've started working on it and obviously it's changed. I've, I've done it so it's I'm comfortable with what I'm doing. So <clears throat> with further ado, that's my other side. And that's my triangle there. So you can see how I've started working this side here. But I'm going to turn it around obviously so it works for me. That is pretty much how it comes together. So you've got triangles. So let me just um, <clears throat> see if I can bend that a little bit more for you. Sorry, let's get some more angles on there for you. So there you go. Excuse my light. <laughs> um, so that's how we're going to work. We're going to put it together, um, bringing these together here and this together here so it opens the bag up. This is going to become our handle. We may have to make another... Um, extension here but let's see how we get on just bringing it together so at the moment <clears throat> let's move this one to the side i'm working like this and i am crocheting on the go as i call it um so i'm not really one for sewing anyway but i don't think sewing for some people some people are brilliant at sewing um so please don't go at me um but for me, I just don't feel like I can I can create a, a, a stitch or sew it together enough, one, neatly, two, um, something that's durable. I want it to last. And I find because I'm knotting, I trust the, the stitches more. So the, in this case, I am using a half treble crochet on the go. So basically what I, what I do, let me just um, put my hook there for a minute, is I um, slip stitch into uh, the back of the stitch into the, hang on a second, into this granny square. So I crochet a half, so from here, I'll crochet a half treble and then I will slip stitch into there and then crochet into a half. So once I've done the slip stitch here, I can then work a half treble into this square. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to show you how that works and then um, I'm going to pause it and then try and complete one row. Um, so we've already done the slip stitch in this on this square so now we're going to do the half treble so yarn over and let's bring this down there so you can actually see what I'm doing. So yarn over and then go through that stitch head like you would normally. Pull all the way through. And then this stitch here, the corresponding one that isn't full, on the opposite granny square. Take your yarn through and then just slip stitch. Yarn over. Go through on the opposite side and create your half treble. And then in the next stitch on the opposite square, just create a slip stitch. Okay. And repeat. So you could do, if you wanted to, you could work another treble into there, like so, and then do it that way. In fact, let's do that. Let's frog it back. Because I think we're going to get more movement on that, and I think that will work better. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's start in the corner and start again. The nice thing is about when you're teaching or doing demonstrations, sometimes you have epiphanies when you're thinking because your adrenaline kicks in. So let's go with that flow. 
go with that thought. So I'm going to, I've slip stitched into the corner. I'm going to do a standing stitch into this one. So if you've never done a standing stitch, if uh, you go, is if you're making a double crochet or in US terms, single crochet. And then go back through that loop and then pull back up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to find the corresponding or the corresponding stitch, which would be this one here, because that's in line with what we're working on. Yarn over, and then we can create our half treble that side. And then we're going to do the exact same in the next stitch on this side. And we're just going to to and fro. You're just making sure you've got all your stitches because it can throw you off a little bit. And then do the same. In, oh, I've got the same stitch head, so make sure you're, you're walking what you're doing. Not walking, looking. And then you just yarn over, repeat again. Yarn over, go for that stitch head. Oh, nice fresh breeze then. And then it's very sunny in the UK right now. Oh, squeaky door. And then just keep, basically it's like a seesaw. From this side, half treble, to the other side, half treble. It's like a seesaw. Oh, drop the stitch. Imagine if that was knitting, I had 20,000 stitches on one needle. Ooh, the thought. That's why I like crochet, one stitch at a time. And then keep doing the same and that's pretty easy to do and that should give us some flexibility in those corners so if you've ever done granny square on the go where you can do clusters you're pretty much doing the same with these stitches so let's go a bit slower for you just in case I'm going too fast and I realize after I videoed it <clears throat> we can always go around the edges and knitting these up and create a nice thicker border it's not an issue so we're working into this one here at the other side of the let's bring this down just a touch more and then yarn over pull it all the way through and then find that next stitch in your opposite square and then go all the way through it again. Right, should we have a sneaky peek? Let's see how it's looking. Okie dokie. Right, lovely. Just making sure everything's kind of lining up. Lovely jubbly. So like I say, we can always correct any issues, but you can see how nice that stitch looks. And there's a lot of nice flexibility there. Look at the movement in that, which is nice. Um, when it comes to folding, let's have a look. Let's uh, try and fold it in the right direction. I think it's, I've got to figure this out now. Uh, yeah, that's it. It always takes a bit of time. So. How does it look? How does it feel? Well, I'm pretty pleased with that. I think it gives it a nice bit of flexibility there. Um, at least it's nice and structured. It will add a nice bit of texture as well. So that's working well. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to pause and I shall come back to you when we've done. Okay, my lovelies. <clears throat> so what have we been up to while you've been away? So I have my three large squares that could do with being blocked, to be honest. Um, I have worked both corners there and there. So at the moment I have one free one that I haven't um, other than this edge here. But I have two squares that are together, just the, the, the corner there and the corner there. So it's time now. Where's my wool working from? Hang on. Where was I? I, I know I haven't got it off. Well, I think I haven't got it off. Right. So that's where my loop is at the moment. So I've worked all the way up to here. So I've worked around this direction and then up to here. So <laughs> this is when I was getting a bit fiddly. So hang on. Hang on, hang on. So I need to work out how I did it now. 
you know, and you do it and you think, oh, that makes sense. Right, there we go. <laughs> Naturally, I did it anyway. So that's my um, one corner complete because I have my front and my back attached. So now I need to bring this over here. Uh, not that way, that way. <laughs> and then I need to work, because um, I'm working obviously right-handed, I'm working from right to left. I had to think about that then, right to left. Um, I need to work in that direction. So what I've been doing on this one um, is I've been working a crochet. Uh, hold on. This is where my brain has a bit of a wobble. So <laughs> I've had a moment, right? So, <laughs> so the point that I was at this stage was whether or not I've had to come on and realign myself. Hang on. I've brought my water upstairs. I'll have a swig of water and uh, it'll all come back to me. Okie dokie. So, ideally, I need to be working from this side. And this is where things get tricky. So, I wasn't going to um, cut my wool at first because I thought that I could work from back to forth. Now, if I was doing the slip stitch one, I could, but obviously I want it to be in line with how that one works. So, best thing to do is just snip it off. Didn't want to do that, but I'm going to. And if anybody's interested, this hook as well is from a UK based um, business called Boltec. Um, I bought this because I just think I've been wanting one for some time. I mean, look how look how pretty that is. So if you can offer them some support, they're a West Midlands company, not far from us, literally down the road. Um, you can buy their hooks on Etsy. And um, the reason why I'm saying it is not because I'm getting paid to say it. It's because um, I know that a lot of Etsy businesses are struggling right now to get sales. And Boltec is one of them, and I'd like to offer my support. So there you go. A little bit from me. I like to help businesses where I can. So if you're from the US, I know there's a few people in the US that do actually order from them. They're hand carved, and the resins, it's all handmade. And um, I can't remember which one this one is. I think it's, I think it might be walnut. But they're super smooth, and they're just really lovely to work with. I've not actually worked with wood before, other than the, um, or have. I like the Knit Pro Symphony. I can't say I'm a huge fan, if I'm honest. I like the fact that this is wider here, like the Furls one that I used, that I was using um, two seconds ago. Where's that gone? <laughs> um, yeah, and I I find that helps my hand, and it, it means I can crochet for a lot longer. So anyway, let's crack on. So they're good if you've got tired hands, if you get um, arthritis or anything like that. So I need to figure out what I'm doing. So, okay. There we go. I've got my rhythm now. For a minute then, I wasn't really thinking about what I was doing. So, it can be a bit tricky when you start. Right. Okay, I'm going to frog that back because I need that two seconds just to get my head around it. So let's move in a bit closer. Open wide. Right, so it's much easier when you do um, one stitch and then the slip stitch because it, you can navigate when you're like, oh, two stitches. Ooh, a bit complicated. So I'm just going to work my standard stitch because I like the structure that, the, ooh, that this gives. Just pull that tail down a little bit. And then I can then go woohoo into that hole. So yarn over. Take that through that corner place there. In fact, what I'm going to do, yeah, that's fine. I'm going to create another border around anyway to neaten everything up and then just yarn all the way through. So your, your kind of joining part is the middle bit, like this bit here. So it's, uh, like I say, a seesaw. Go through the next stitch, half treble. Or in US terms, that would be a half double crochet. There we go. And then to next stitch. Because we've noticed we're getting a lot of US um, followers on our website. So hey ho to if you're from the US. I was well chuffed when I got a Portland one. Because uh, that's one of the places I really, really want to go to and Seattle. 
And there's other places in America that I want to go to as well. I'm a bit of a foodie. If you've ever looked at our website, you will know that we have a little coffee shop. Um, we make all our own cakes and things. So when I go abroad or travel, I like to uh, go to different places where there's yummy food. And I'm dying to do Route 66. Although I think I've watched too many horror films, so I'm a bit like, oh. <laughs> but if you're from the US and you're from any of those places, if you want to recommend some foodie places, I would love to know. Any places that you think are the best places in America, whether it's in your state or wherever, um, then I would love to know because if I ever do decide to come in that direction, and um, also wool shops as well. We were talking about this yesterday, a couple of people in our craft group. And we were saying about we'd love to go to a thrift shop, which is like a charity shop over here. Um, but you all seem to have the best, like, you know, like Michael's. I'm dying to go to Michael's just because every time I look at anything, it's like, I've been to Michael's and I've got this and went there and I've got this. And I'm like, oh, I want to go to those places. So is there any suggestions you've got for us um, UK English based crafters? We would love to know. Foodie wise, comment below. Let me know what's the best place to go, whether it's hot dogs, beef burgers hamburgers um pies pies i'm dying to try pies i'm not even a sweet tooth but i could yeah i'd like a pie <laughs> banana and toffee but banoffee that's my favorite so i'm just working my stitches in a little bit at a time and i hope you don't mind me rambling by the way this is the way i am when i teach so sorry Let's move this over, I'm getting a bit cumbersome. So you just work in stitch at a time, so half treble or half double crochet into each stitch. So you complete one and then you work into the next one and then you complete that one and then you yarn over and go into the next one. And it will create this lovely raised um, stitch. And it's just a nice cross. I just think it just really adds to the look of the bag. And then, oh, banging everything, I'm trying to get my, my wool out. There we go. I've got so many videos to video and edit and things like that. I just can't wait to start showing you. If there's anything you'd love me to um, to try to, to find out or to, you know, research or to demo, I'm more than happy to do it so your suggestions really are what, what are going to build our um our following and to be honest i find youtube a little bit more comfortable than i do instagram i feel it's much much easier to 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 do something like this than it is to do something that's like five minutes i feel like when you come on youtube you expect to watch something with a little bit more information let's move everything over just a little bit more Moving just a little bit. So you just go from one stitch to the next. And it's quite therapeutic. Once you get your rhythm, like before, I couldn't get my rhythm, and you witnessed that. And I'm going to keep that in the video because I think it's really good for you to see. Come on, camera, why aren't you focusing? Right, I'm going to give my camera a little bit of a wipe. Oh, no, it's doing that. Oh, 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 oh. it's making its mind up. Probably getting annoyed with me moving my uh, hand around all the time. Do you know what I think is really strange about YouTube? Is the fact that I'm going to be videoing this now, and it could be like my other videos because I was looking through all my old ones. And um, it's a lovely summer's night. Well, midsummer. Summer has just started. We had the, a huge moon yesterday. Um, the other day, it was a strawberry moon. Um, it was lovely. It was huge. It was like something you see off like ET. It was massive. It was so bright as well. One of the brightest moons I've seen. But uh, apparently, it marks the beginning of summer, and how everything changes. I guess it's what magnifies it. It was really low. And it was about ten, almost ten o'clock. Because in uh, we're coming up to the longest day, aren't we soon? 
And I wonder what I'll be thinking in a year's time when I look back at this video and thinking, oh, crikey, is that how I used to do it? In fact, there's a video on here that's what's in my craft bag and I found it really entertaining to watch um, because one, we're using, I'm using different um, equipment and obviously I've invested in my kit a little bit more since then. And um, yeah, it's kind of strange to look back and just think that was the beginning of COVID that was when I took that, did that video. And uh, I find that really just really a bizarre thing because even though we all know COVID's been, it almost feels like we're just cracking on now with a little bit more of a stressful lifestyle, um, especially in the UK. We've got energy prices going up and all sorts of things going on. And it feels like my video is a little bit of a time capsule. So it's really odd to look back at those videos and think, oh, man, I remember how I felt. And it felt so surreal, like not watching anybody go out in their gardens and we were clapping for the NHS and wondering like when we were going to be allowed back into our shop and what was going to happen to the customers that had come in crying because they didn't know what to do and how to deal with it. And yeah, what a bizarre time. And so many people we've lost and still losing from COVID and it's just utterly bizarre. A lot of businesses like flourished during that time as well because like people were on furlough. So in the, the UK, people were like furloughed from work and the government would help supporting people so they because they couldn't go to work and then living. I don't know how that worked in the US. Um, but yeah, it was a bizarre time. Kind of reminds me a bit of non non eleven uh, a little bit because um, that was such a bizarre point in history as well for us. Um, I remember thinking, right, I need to close this hole up now. So what am I going to do? I can't go into any holes there. Right, so everything is now... Right, I'm going to lift this up a little bit more because I'm working that close. I don't want to make you dizzy. There we go. I should have blocked these a little bit more beforehand. So I'm just going to do some double crochets into this corner just to close it up. I'm not even particularly bothered how. Just as long as it closes it up. Treat it like a amagurumi head and it looks neat and that's the main thing. And I can always sew back in after. I don't mind not sewing back in after when you're weaving. It's just um, I don't like the thought of things sitting in my bag and then... So this Aaron is a Starcraft Aaron. I don't know if you guys in the US have got Starcraft, but in the UK it's quite a well-known brand. Um, this is the, the special um, Aaron, and it has a percentage of wool in it along with acrylic. So, how does this bag come together? So this was my big, oh, how does this work then? So again, I need to bring those two together as well to make that more pointed. And then it's just a case of working out how I do this bit. So in the pattern, by the looks of what she, the lady had done and that as well, what I'd seen on Pinterest, she kind of put it together like that. So this isn't something, you know, that's unique to me. I'm just winging it. And I thought I'd wing it with you. So she had it over her shoulder. So I'll try it on my shoulder. Feels a little bit too tight for me. But I reckon if we make a little bit of a bridge here, we can um, make kind of a little makeshift um la 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 handle so i'm going to pause here and then come back to you shortly okay <clears throat> so i have created a bridge against the top of my um bag i've the two corners here if you can see you can see the triangle there and the top of the triangle there I created a standard stitch, but in the standard stitch, I kept it going and going and going until I attached it here with a slip stitch. So another useful fact for a, sta um, a standing stitch is that you can grow your row until it gets there. And then I've worked in this way and then I've worked in that way. So I've made the shape as big as I wanted it. And then I've worked around a border, a half double border, and then finished it off with a slip stitch edge. And you can see how that looks really nice and effective. Making sure I'm looking at the right row. Yep, you can see it there. Look, haven't done it on that bit there yet. Hang on. 
I keep moving my camera. I'm so sorry. So you can see how it's got a nice thick edge there. One yet to be done this side. So you can see how nice it's starting to look. Um, and it pulls up nice like that. So you can go under your arm and you've got a nice like little shoulder bag. Now you could create probably another little square here, um, attach it to there, the points there, and then have it flip over so you've got a bit of a lid. Or you could create a little chain and perhaps create um, a little loop there and then have it so you can kind of tassel it up with a knot maybe. That's another option. Um, so I wish I can hear my dog with these little toenails. Um, and I thought we'd just come back here and do the slip stitch border here. So obviously it's more about it pulling up and the pattern working that way. It doesn't look like I want it to that way, but it does when I pull it. So absolutely fine. So let's get my, uh, my hook and we can start from this area here because I just need to knock that back in by the looks of it. Let's just slip stitch that back into place. So at least it's double knotted. There we go. Right to you. Wool in place. And then work into that corner. And then we can just work into each stitch. Hopefully I'll focus in a minute. Sorry, <laughs> I'm used to doing it on my camera. Hang on a second. Okay, sorry, after a bit of a wipe, it looks a bit better. So slip stitch into those stitches. So each stitch and then a slip stitch. So go through, pull your wall through, go through that loop. Pull your wall through and go through that loop. And then... I think it's my dog downstairs, that's what I can hear. <laughs> His dough nails. And then you just create that nice stitch. And it just kind of brings everything together. Okay, it doesn't have to be super tight. It just has to be... Oh. Just creates that nice finish. Turn this light down just a touch. So go through your stitch, pull your wool through and you can see how you get this lovely finish on there. So it's a really simple pattern. You can modify it. You can, um, let's bring this camera, oh, sorry, touching the lens again. You can make it however you want. So you can choose any granny square. Um, and, you know, what I would probably say as a rule of reference and for anybody that's thinking of doing this, Make sure all three squares are the same pattern because at least then you know that they're the correct stitches so you won't, you shouldn't hit any obstacles. But if you want to do it slightly different, you can. I've just randomly picked up some um, granny squares that I'd started making using this wool and I've just put them to use So um, for the sake of this pattern. So obviously the ones that you um, do that are fixed um, will work this way but this is a really simple way of working it's three granny squares it shouldn't take you too long to do I did that in a morning that one really simple um <clears throat> these ones probably a little bit longer but you know it's it's sometimes about making the shouts and making them work for you but I think that's a lovely bag and I'm going to create a pattern for this but this is a video just to instruct you on what you can do kind of use your imagination go wild 
try out different granny squares, different patterns and bring them together. Now I've used the um, half treble or the half double crochet method, which is a half, you know, the stitch is the same, but you kind of work like that. So as you go into one, you can then go into the other and work that way. You can do the double crochet method and you can do the slip stitch method. It doesn't have to be that way. I just thought it'd be a nice little bit of texture to accentuate those lines. And in all fairness, I'm pretty chuffed with what I've done because it's just something I've thrown together. So it just goes to show how simple you can make things. They don't have to be 100% perfect. Sometimes it's just about experimenting, working with shapes and creating something completely different. So I'm going to carry on with my slip stitch border. I will take photographs of this when it's done. And I hope I can start using it pretty soon, to be honest. There we go, my lovelies. And it's a nice, easy thing to do for a gift as well. So if you've got a gift that you want to make for somebody, you need to do something pretty quick. Bob's your uncle. This is a weekend project, if that. If we can do it in a day, if you've got a whole day in the garden. Um, yeah, so there you go. Quick and easy. Less than 24 hours to do. And there you go. Enjoy, my lovelies. <laughs>